Hey y'all, Merry Christmas. Are you looking for a present for the engraver in your life and you don't know what to buy them? Or maybe you're a beginner and you'd like to study an engraved firearm like this but you don't have access to the real thing? Then I've got just what you're looking for and that is replica urethane castings. Let's head over to the studio and I'll tell you what they're all about. Hey y'all, welcome back to the studio. I'm Lane Zolke and this is Master Engraver TV. And in today's quick tip, I'm going to tell you about castings. Now, somewhere back in the day, one of our members in the guild got the bright idea to make some silicone molds of one of the pieces that he had finished engraving and was able to pour urethane castings of that original piece. Now that's a great way to keep a record of your work, but they're also fantastic study tools. Uh, this is a casting of the Firearm Engravers Guild of America Colt 1911 that I just finished engraving. And the thing about guns like this, they tend to be purchased by collectors and then they go into the safe and they're rarely seen in public again. And for the beginning engraver, they really never have a chance to sit down and study a gun like that for any length of time. And that's where castings are beneficial. That's where they come into play. The casting is a perfect three-dimensional representation of the original engraving. And you can see all of the detail just as if you were holding the original gun in your hands. Now pictures are great but there's just only so much detail that they can convey. With a casting like this, you can see things like the depth of the cuts. You can feel and see the height of the raised gold inlay and just a ton of other details that you can't get from a picture. Let's take a look at how these are made. I'll tell you more about what they are and what they're not. And I'll also tell you where you can purchase this slide and other castings like it. Now the first step in creating a casting is to build a mold frame for the object that you're going to cast. And I use Legos, it's a trick I learned from another engraver. They're really adaptable and you can build a nice clean frame for just about any shaped object. The product that I'm using to pour the mold is from a company called Smooth On. It's a two-part silicon mold material. Uh, it comes in two different colors and when you've mixed those colors correctly, it creates a nice even lavender color. I uh, mix them thoroughly, but you try not to whip any air into the material. You just want to get a nice smooth even consistency without trapping any air bubbles. After I'm finished mixing, I simply pour in the material starting at one end of the casting and I let it flow up and around the item. It takes about six hours for the material to set. Now for my castings, I use a two-part urethane resin from a company called Alumilite. It's easy to pour and it creates a really nice, durable casting. It comes in a bunch of different colors, but I like to use the tan because it resembles old ivory. You have to work quickly with this stuff because the pot life is only a minute or so and then it sets up in about five minutes. And that's all there is to it. Once I have a batch of completed castings, I brush on some latex paint into the engraving and then just wipe off the excess. The casting of this complete 1911 slide was a tough one to pull off, but it was well worth the effort. The results were pretty astounding. I've got a large collection of castings that I've collected from other engravers over the years. I relied on them heavily when I was a beginner, and I still go back and reference them today.
One nice thing about these castings is that I could really never afford to purchase an engraving from any of the artists that you see here. But I can't afford to buy a casting, and in that way I can still enjoy the, the artwork at a fraction of the cost of the actual firearm. Well, now that you know how castings are made and you know what they are, I'll tell you what they're not, and that's perfect. Uh, you can see by my fingers that making these things is messy business, and there's always going to be a few imperfections here or there. But they are about as perfect a representation of a gun like this as you're ever going to get. Most of us will never be able to hold a gun like this in hand, much less study it for any length of time. And the casting can give you that opportunity. Now I've made a small run of this complete slide from the figure 1911. I've also made a run of the three individual sides from that 1911. The full slide casting is available on my website for $80 and that includes shipping anywhere in the United States and the set of three individuals is available for I think $60 and that includes priority mail shipping in the continental US. They're also available as singles if you prefer to purchase them that way. Now if you're interested in purchasing castings from other engravers you can go to the Firearm Engravers Guild of America website at www.fega.com that's F-E-G-A and you'll find several pages of castings from a bunch of our uh, guild members there. They're fairly inexpensive, and they're fun to collect as well. You can find these at my website at www.southerncustomengraving.com. I'll include a link in the description. Till next time, y'all keep your pencils and your gravers sharp. Have fun at the bench, and thanks for watching.